Richard Goff, as ever, at the head of the Rangers line. Well, just listen to the noise that we hear when these two teams take the field. Yes, 50,000 here to emphasise that the word fan is short for fanatic. standards of the rivalry between these two clubs this is an exceptional occasion Celtic back on top after more than a year Rangers supporters desperate for this ninth title in a row an achievement that's been rammed down their throats for more than 20 years since the league trophy came here for a ninth successive season for Celtic back in 1974 well Stuart Kirk who was 22 years old yesterday has come in to the side recently and he's actually a pupil of the goalkeeper at the other end Andy Gorham they were together at Hibs when Gorham was a senior player Kerr was just a, a junior on schoolboy forms but Andy Gorham has broken Celtic hearts in the past and what an occasion for him to find his fitness and come back after this hip problem I tell you what, before the match, Mark, you can imagine both dressing rooms and how Celtic were so anxious to know, would this man there, would he be fit? Would he be wearing that number one jersey? And I just think, after all he's done in the last few seasons against Celtic, how they must have been a little disappointed he was there. And that's for Stuart Kerr. He may have played, Martin, but nothing can prepare you for what's ahead. He'll want a touch of the ball early, a nice clean touch, and then he'll take it from there. But this is you. This is something to savour. Hugh Dallas from Motherwell is tonight's referee. Talk of the biggest demand for tickets since Real Madrid came here for a European quarter-final back in 1980. Celtic very much together these days. Rangers at the moment having a rocky spell. But what they have done in the past when playing Celtic, at times they haven't been the better team, but they've usually come away with the better end of the result. Judgment night part two is perhaps slightly stretching the point. No titles can be won or lost, but as a pointer for Hulby Holyfield and Hulby Tyson at the end of the season, it is such a meaningful match. Celtic attack the goal to the right in the first half. The weather's been pretty good in Glasgow in the build-up to a match that takes in everyone's interests. And both teams lined up exactly as we thought on the graphic, Martin. Celtic 4-4-2, Rangers very much in that formation with two holding midfield players and Alberts and Gascoigne slightly ahead of those. O'Neill to Tomboy and Grant. Alan Stubbs, the Englishman, coming to terms with what a match of this magnitude means. Of course, the two clubs have met already this season at Ibrox. Rangers winning by two goals to nil. The second crucial goal coming just after. Celtic had hit the woodwork at the other end, and Rangers broke to wrap it all up with Gascoigne. Alberts, well fed by Loudrup. Here's Robertson on the move. One of the few Scottish-born players in the Rangers side tonight. McInnes is another, a true Rangers fan, given the chance to live out his dreams. Lava. That's going. So often the focal figure, but just one. Uh, the pass tonight trying to come up with a crucial result for him, whose hip problem has really been causing most difficulty in terms of kicking the ball didn't really connect cleanly but didn't show any signs of grimacing three course Celtic's day Donnelly back from Van Hoydon McNamara who's uh, been developing very comfortable right-sided partnership with Donnelly. Further forward, it's Di Canio. And 
Richard Goff is penalised. That's the Rangers part of the ground where this incident took place. Around 8,000 visiting fans letting Di Canio uh, know that they thought he died. Oh, I think he made the most of it. I think it was a free kick. But he made more of it than there really was. But that doesn't matter. It's a free kick early on. And it allows Celtic to put quality in the box if they want. And let people go and attack it. And the referee just had a word with Di Canio about, uh, I think, reacting to the fans. Header by Grant was a good one. This is Stubbs trying to clip it across. Yeah. <laughs> it plops into Gorham's grateful grasp. I'm not sure who they came off either. When they went to sleep a little Rangers, and Stubbs was allowed to get the cross. And as it came over, Gascoigne and Petrich both go for it. I think they're quite happy that it just dropped into Andy Gorham's arms. Very similar to an awful lot of Rangers Celtic games that I've seen. Early on, Celtic starting the more confident in the match. Grant. Just tucking it down for Boyd. He was part of Scotland's successful win over Sweden. Holding the World Cup qualification hopes. Of course, one of the Rangers players, Björklund here, was in the beaten Swedish side at Ibrox, his home ground on Sunday. Lauder. There's a Van Hoedon who uh, got close to McInnes and forced the error. Ducanio has been in excellent form recently. Tom. Now Donnelly. Three course. McNamara to try and whip it in. Donnelly's first touch was excellent. And it takes the touch off Birkland. Lovely football from Celtic. That really was a very cool patient build-up. When you look at the space Donnelly's got here, he'd be a little disappointed that he hit Bjorklund with that. Had an opportunity to put in a really telling ball. Oh, and Gascoigne uh, got pushed quite clearly there. And uh, if there were any aggressive thoughts in his mind because of this, he certainly got himself together pretty quickly. Yeah, you can see that Brian and you really making a really determined bit to get there. But there was no way he was going to get through Gascoigne unless he fouled him. Well, Rangers, just to remind you, will go back on top if they win. Before, of course, a Celtic win will keep the home side tonight on top of the table. Robertson almost got in behind McNamara. He does that ever so well, David Robertson. He's as good as I've seen left side at getting forward and causing people, people problems. And when you look at the formation Rangers have got out tonight, it's going to be important that both he and Cleland do that if Rangers are going to succeed. It's Craig Moore. They're trying to perhaps catch out on any early nerves for Stuart Kerr. It's beyond the goalkeeper. Di Canio. Here's the German, Tom. Really got to go it alone. And now Czech's waiting for support. Which was uh, a riding right hand left. Horn's kick goes straight to Vighorst. Tom again. He's not been on a winning Celtic side against Rangers. And he's been saying over the past couple of days it's time to put that right. Boyd. And still. And hold on. The challenge came from Goff. The decision is a goal kick. And the claim for the penalty came from the fans. And it's noticeable Pierre Van Hoydonk just got to his feet to get on with it. But Tom Boyd does ever so well, wide on the left. And he plays a decent ball in. It's not easy to control. He's under pressure from Richard Goff. He can't quite get his first touch right. But Tommy Burns, sorry Mark, will be delighted with the start this side of made in the opening seven minutes. But he'll be very conscious of the fact that he's seen this many times before. And what he wants is that apart from the good play, he'll want a goal. 
There's a slip by O'Neill and allows it to win. Rangers look for a goal and get one in the eighth minute from Brian Loudrup. Well, how many times have you and I sat and witnessed this? A good positive start from the home side. One mistake, and when you have someone of the world class of Brian Loudrup, you just can't make a mistake. Look, but he's got 40 yards to go. It's not over and done with. He's got a bit of football in him. Alan Stubbs doesn't close him down, in my opinion, quick enough or well enough, because he allows Loudrup time to drill it past not only him, but to drill it past Stuart Kerr. Rangers' first real sortie, and it's a punishing one. A tale of two Bryans. Brian O'Neill made the slip. Brian Loudrup took maximum advantage of it. And the player who picked up an award as Scotland's man of last month. Only yesterday. Has given the Hunters, as he's been calling his Rangers team, in second place. Unusual situation for them against the Hunted Celtic. Thought a lot already about the psychology of this particular fixture. And uh, well, although Celtic have bags of time to recover if they can, this is a, a major blow to the mental side of the evening for them. Gascoigne. Alberts. Robertson on the move. And this time. O'Neill gets it away. Donnelly. Well, you can build and build and build old firm matches. Martin up to a point where sometimes you're a little disappointed. But I think the one thing that's always made classic old firm encounters over recent years has been a goal, maybe in the opening 15, 20 minutes. We have a goal in the opening 10. Donnelly. Celtic have another corner. Rangers have the lead. And Stubbs joins the posse in the centre. O'Neill. It's another corner. Already blood spilt. Rangers. Richard Goff. <laughs> and it was Goff who didn't flinch with a clearance. Back from Boyd. Nice to spot it by Grant. Don Lip on to Di Canio. Celtic have three in the centre. And Donnelly waiting on the edge. Ducanio trying to get a yard on Robertson and get the ball across. Tidied up by Cullen. A good response. It's exactly what Tommy Burns would have wanted. A positive response from his side. He's quickly come from that seat in the stand down to the touchline. Trying to make one or two orders. Maybe change one or two little things. But he'll be pleased with the response of his side. Immediately back on the attack again. Well, the Celtic players trying to sort themselves out. The Celtic fans are pretty stunned. A real change in the atmosphere. Rapture, of course, for the Rangers followers. Jerkland, who is a true defender. And he's quick. And I think if, if they needed that, it was then. De Canio. It was Petric who got it away that time. Tom. Now O'Neill. Donnelly. Well, he was shuffled down the cul-de-sac by Rangers then. Canio is flagged offside. Andy, what do you make of this Rangers formation with the, the two screening players, McInnes and Moore? Well, if ever they needed those two, it'll be now, Martin, having gone one up. 
I think what it allows, it does allow three centre-backs, and I think Petric, Goff and Bjorkel in particular, to just protect the 18-yard line, not to be any wider than, I would say, 20 yards to cover the three of you. If Rangers are going to defend well, it allows those two to play in front of them at the edge of the box, so that none of the three centre-backs is drawn out, out of position. And then with, of course, Robertson and Cleland tucking back in, uh, when they're defending, it does give them that almost seven men across the edge of the 18-yard box that Celtic have to break down. And Celtic playing a dangerous game here. Now they're playing a confident game. And I think that's a measure of the way they're playing at the moment. Horn, of course, tends to fly out of the window when these six have come around, but Celtic have played 5-1-5 at home in the Premier Division this season. It's only the third goal they've conceded in the league on this ground. But the repercussions of it could be enormous. Brian Lauber. In defence of Brian O'Neill, he could have made that mistake against uh, lesser talents and got away with it. Not uh, when Lauder was around. There's a host of players who would have quite happily lost possession to 40 yards from goal. And I think there's even a few wearing blue jerseys who would quite happily have lost possession to there. The one he wouldn't have was a man he did lose it to. Uh, relatively short time in Scotland. Paul Gascoigne has responded very positively to the demands of this fixture. With a good record against Celtic. And is a young man trying very much to keep himself under control. Came through well for England in Georgia. Was particularly effective as the match wore on in keeping the ball as England kept the lead in Tbilisi last Saturday. Top. I think Rangers will be quite happy to concede possession in the kind of areas that Brian O'Neill and, and Alex Tubbs have the ball at the moment. I don't think they'll be too keen to pull men out. But what they will say is, OK, we'll give you it there, but when you come into the last stop, that's when you've got to do something special if you want to create something. It's a very good idea from Stubbs with the pass, but it was Gascoigne who was helping out Cleland on that far side, defending for Rangers. Here's Mike the mark. Oh, and Big Horse is in here for Celtic. And one Dane had scored at one end, and the other had a great opportunity to equalise at the other. Well, David Robertson gets, gets tucked away. If you see him down at the bottom of the screen, he gets drawn out, and that creates a huge gap. There's a little bit of fortune that the ball reached Big Horse, but really, at this level, Loudrop showed you what you've got to do, Martin. You must make the goalkeeper work, that's the thing. So one thing you must do, he'll be disappointed that he's got under it, got it up and over. Make Andy Gorham work, that would have been the order of the day. So here's Boyd. The big moments in the opening 15 minutes going the way of Rangers. McInnes. Alberts. That's what it's going to be hard for Rangers, Martin, because they haven't anyone up there who they can just play it up to and say, get hold of it and keep the ball for a bit. Brian Lavrup, very much a rover up front, and it'll be difficult for Rangers to play the ball up and get someone to hold on to it. And there I think we'll see that Celtic do have an awful lot of possession. But it's one thing having possession, it's another thing making it count. Free kick was given against Van Hoydonk, who's... Uh contractual uncertainty with Celtic has got a host of scouts here at the game tonight a good number from English clubs we believe Celtic of course hope that it can all be resolved and he will stay made a big impact the Dutchman in the Scottish game Stubbs Boyd to take on Gascoigne and whip the cross in. Picked off by the head of Petrich. Gascoigne trying to get it out, but not with any of his customary deliberation. Here's Andy Todd. That's what Craig Moore's in there to do. Hassel and Harry and stop Celtic. Passing the ball with control into the Rangers penalty area, but it might come in now. Moore can only get it half away. And the shot from the 
midfield player who, of course, is Celtic to the core, Peter Grant. Yeah, it's not the best ball in, but you see the two lads, seven and nine, McInnes and Moore, just playing ahead of that centre-back trio, and that's the kind of area he wants. Peter Grant, not noted for his, his striking ability, certainly, but a little bit underneath it. We should point out, Andy, that for Celtic to be in this position going into this match as league leaders, it does represent significant improvement over the last couple of years. Now there's another step forward to be taken. But of course it never was going to be an easy one. And uh, having conceded the first goal this evening, it's going to be that much harder. And I think when you look at results between these two over the last couple of years, Martin, the next step forward, it could seem an obvious one, it's Celtic beating Rangers. And, and going from there. It hasn't happened for Tommy Burns in his time as management here. The last win was at Hamden in May 1985, 1995, I should say. And that really was a match that didn't matter too much in the uh, league stakes. This certainly matters. Alberts has stayed down on the halfway line. He really is a strong man, and he didn't stay down for long. Four million pounds from Hamburg. A couple of appearances already for Germany. Two Dallas, who has been in charge of an old firm game once before, it was the match that finished 3 3. This was best by Veghorst. De Canio wanted it in defeat. Petric. Moore getting forward to try and support Lauder at that time. Maybe flick it on for the day. McKenna's. Well, it's going to be a, a booking for Boyd for just laying hands on Laudrup. Yeah, Brian Laudrup was making a lovely little run in behind Tom Boyd. And a little pull at the jersey. And I think when you do that, I don't think you could have any argument if the referee brings out a yellow card. minutes gone Rangers already in the lead maybe a chance to really improve their position here Alberts and with uh, a relatively untried goalkeeper to see what was in his mind I'm not so sure that's not his first touch apart from picking it out the back of the net Stuart Kerr's played 20 minutes of an old firm match his first and that might well be the first time he's been called in to do anything get a touch of the ball top Bicanio. Rangers wanted offside, they're not going to get it. Celtic to get a corner. And there's still a bit of a fleeting going on at the assistant referee on this near side. Bicanio will take the corner. Goalkeeper didn't really uh, command the situation. Plenty of bodies for him to try and fight his way through, Andy Gorham. The game came all the way. I think it's always dangerous, always dodgy if you come into that many bodies. And Andy Gorham's not the biggest, most imposing goalkeeper. But when he comes that far, he's really got to make sure. Loudon. Elusive again. Gascoigne trying to keep pace in the centre. Alberts has got forward as well. It's Alberts. Well, that's the ploy, Mark. That's the ploy for Laudrup to break like that and for Gascoigne and Alberts to get in support. And both did the job. You know, when you see that, that's half a chance. 
wonderful run. Now, Ladrup doesn't cross this immediately because no one's with him. He's left everybody behind, so he pulls it back. That gives Gascoigne and Albert's time to get into the box. And it comes over. It's a decent height. It's a decent distance. Just didn't get enough power in the header. Well, all this uh, while you're uh, looking at that replay, Andy, Titanio is getting booked for an incident right in front of the assistant referee on this near side involving Richard Goff, who is also uh, in need of uh, some attention for that blooded nose. Van Hoydonk's got involved for some reason. Beekhorst has dragged him away. I think what you'd ask to say to Richard Goff, you've got to cut and you've got to get off the pitch to get it treated. Obviously, Goff didn't want to go off. But it's a second Celtic booking. Well, Di Canio knows a thing or two about derbies from his uh, time in Italy with uh, Juventus against Torino, Milan against Inter, Lazio against Roma. Pretty heated occasions. Well, Richard Goff says uh, it looks as though he will be leaving Ibrox at the end of the season, but he's keeping his options open. He's certainly not leaving this game. Walter Smith and Archie Knox, David Dodds there as well. Little meeting of the minds for the backroom staff. And the referee feeling now being pursued. Celtic uh, feeling that the free kick had been taken and Van Hoydonk should have gone on Andy. Well, this is what happens here. He straight on the ball. Now that, I certainly not taken. But well, you can understand the upset. Very similar to an incident that went out at Old Trafford between Manchester United and Tottenham involving Terry Sheringham. Very similar. But I think you could see from that there was no that was certainly no intent in taking a free kick from Richard Goff. And now there's more for Hugh Dallas to deal with. Well, every decision that goes against Celtic now is going to be greeted with this sort of noise. I mean, that's a free kick, it's as simple as that. There can't be an argument about it. Not so sure it's a booking, I have to say. But it's certainly a free kick. Stubbs is booked. Well, you do feel at the moment that Celtic's chances in this match depend most of all on their self-control, if they can maintain it. In danger of losing the grip on the reality of the situation. Gascoigne eyeing up the free kick. Well, you've got the craft of Gascoigne, haven't you? And you've got the power of Alberts. I mean, take your pick. Celtic have got four in the wall. Gascoigne has certainly got the quality to bend it past, but it's Alberts to power it into the line of four. And here's De Canio. Challenge was by McInnes, who was struggling to keep pace with the Italian. Well, that'll be a booking. The Canyon's away from McInnes, just gets a touch to the ball there. McInnes goes to the ground. It can only be one result yellow card. Yellow for McInnes. The first Rangers player to receive a caution. So in a not similar situation to uh, that which was confronted by Gascoigne and Alberts a moment or two ago at Celtic to challenge Gorham through Van Hoydok. He doesn't really seem to be disguising his intentions. And Gorham 
got to it with uh, outstretched arms and strong fists. Well, he got there. I didn't think he would be beaten. This is a sort of distance. Well, if it beats Andy Gorham, you'd need to think it would be in the top corner. Cross. Donnelly. And lining up in the centre, well played by Gorham, not once but twice. Yeah. That was a save. And uh, his teammates dragging Donnelly out of the way. And once more, as Donnelly, I think, was quite entitled to have a bite at it. Yeah, you better believe it. Andy Gorham did brilliantly. He guessed what Donnelly was going to do. He just came out looking for offside from the flick there. But you can see Donnelly's not. Now watch Gorham. Then he goes. That's brilliant goalkeeping. But Donnelly's entitled to go after it again. Didn't quite catch him. But the way this game's been played just now, any little incident like that, players are going to get upset. But that was super goalkeeping. He gets up quickly. Donnelly's entitled to go for it. You see he doesn't catch Gorham. But I think he's entitled to go after the ball. Well, I can't think of anywhere else in the world where you see football play with this passion. It is leading to... Uh, Difficult times for referee Hugh Dallas. The spectators driving on the players to uh, operate here with their emotions as well as with their talents. And Rangers lead Celtic at Parkhead by the Brian Ladrup goal still. Cucano wasn't going to get anything for that. Now, you can always tell players' reactions are good ones. There was no complaint from the Italian. He got quickly up. Well, he's offside. Well, he was offside straight away, but the he's side off. didn't go up straight away. No, it didn't. I mean, he's right. He got it right at last, you would say, or eventually. But Loudrup was offside. He's really late. Look at Loudrup's run. The ball's played now. Now, you can see he's three, four yards. Now, look at the, ref, the linesman on the far side. He took a little bit of time. But eventually he got it right. Yes, and to be fair to the official, for half a second, Loudrup was heading back towards the halfway line. And then he couldn't resist going for the ball. And once he made that move, of course, the flag had to go up. Almost half an hour gone. O'Neill. Early across this time. But uh, comfortable for Gorham. Been a little bit of uh, controversy. Andy Gorham's had uh, a fair amount of work to do in the Rangers penalty area. A bit of controversy about Gorham not being able to be in the Scotland squad last weekend, but being fit for this match tonight. But five days, a long time in football. It is a very long time. I think it's unfair criticism. 